Up with Crim begins now. Experts say the coronavirus death toll surpassed the 2003 SARS epidemic. It is now linked to hundreds of deaths and more than 40,000 illnesses. Now the U.S. and China are working together to combat the deadly virus. And boy, it was a beautiful weekend. We are now continuing that trend into the beginning of your work week with no wet weather expected until we hit Thursday. So a dry streak on the way. And also this morning, we're talking all things Oscars from the moments that made everyone laugh to the moments that left everyone shocked. It's all coming up in just a bit. And mission accomplished this morning. An 18 month old girl is reunited with her favorite doll. The little girl named Ken Lee has a doll that plays a recorded message from her father who is deployed with the United States Marine Corps. She lost the doll when traveling this past weekend. Delta Airlines was able to track the doll down and now Ken Lee has her doll back and a new plush Delta plane. Aww, sweet story sweet. there. I love that. It's, I'd say it's probably pretty rare that that's actually able to happen. So good for her. She got her doll back. Good on Delta. <laughs> mm, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> also, Pilot Pete from The Bachelor <laughs> flies for Delta. There so we go. What a fun fact mm -hmm. for you there. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're keeping in mind. Yes. Maybe it was Pilot Pete who personally found the doll. In my mind, He's probably. That that's it. exactly He's that how it went. He's of a guy, really. <laughs> 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 All right, we're starting off our Monday morning, not only with a lot of Bachelor talk, but we're going to get to the weather first. <laughs> uh, we've Or not Bachelor talk, Oscar talk, too. A lot, <laughs> that, too. Of <laughs> that, too. Honestly, we can do it all. Uh, you can see as we start off our Monday morning, roads are clear, roads are dry. It is a beautiful Monday morning, and we're expected to see that sun come out today. It is yet another dry day around the inland northwest. Satellite radar looks like this. We see a couple just snow flurries, very light snow flurries traveling through western Montana and the north Idaho panhandle. Some of them are encountering uh, us here in Spokane, passing through maybe the extreme portion, uh, extreme eastern portion of Washington. But other than that, really dry, dry skies as we start off your day. Uh, next 12 hours look like this. We're going to be seeing those temperatures warm up to about their normal range. 38 degrees seems just in line with average. Uh, we do have plenty of clouds out there right now that will dissipate as the day goes on. Just past about 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. We're going to move toward a trend of mostly sunny conditions out there and you can see the next three days stick with that trend. We're going to be seeing a high of uh, near 40 degrees today if not 38, 39 degrees. Overnight lows dropping down to about 27 degrees uh, both through this early morning hour period and then into early Tuesday morning. By the time we get into Wednesday morning, we'll warm up a bit into the afternoon and overnight hours and move toward mostly cloudy skies. Again, that next best chance for wet weather does not come until Thursday. Jen, over to you. Devin, thank you. This morning, experts say the coronavirus is linked to more than 900 deaths, and it includes the first, first death of an American citizen from the disease. U.S. leaders confirmed that American citizen died last week in China. Experts confirm more than 360 other cases outside of China. As of Friday, it includes 12 confirmed cases within the U.S. borders. Now, experts say the virus sickened more than 40,000 other people worldwide. In the U.S., 100 people are under quarantine and undergoing tests. The Chinese ambassador to the U.S. says there is ongoing contact between the two countries. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention leaders, academic institutions, and some American companies are offering technical help. Well, we, we welcome the American experts to participate in our efforts. And we are coordinating with the World Health Organization. Now, Japan is reporting dozens of new cases aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship. Health leaders found 66 new cases on board, in addition to 70 confirmed cases last week. This weekend, the president of Princess Cruises issued a statement. I'd like to give you a few updates today. Our first focus is supporting the medical needs of our guests and teammates. The Japanese government and Princess have both supplied additional resources and more doctors and nurses who have now boarded the ship. Experts in mental health and pharmacy will also be joining shortly. This morning, passengers are out of quarantine on a different cruise ship in Hong Kong. Experts say no one tested positive for the virus on that ship. A fourth student at the University of Washington tested negative for coronavirus. The screening of this student is not connected to the previous screenings of three other UW students. All test results were negative. University leaders stress there are no confirmed cases of coronavirus among university community members, but the school has restricted all official travel to China by students, faculty, and staff. Washington State University also canceled all study abroad programs in China for the time being. 
504 now this morning and police have arrested a suspect in connection with a burglary at Anchor and Art Tattoo Gallery. According to Spokane Police, the suspect allegedly stole over $8,000 worth of items on Friday. Now, the shop's owner shared footage from his security cameras throughout social media with the hopes of finding out where his missing gear could be. The suspect was then caught on Saturday while he was, re was reportedly stealing a bike. As a small business owner, you go through a lot anyways all the time, so it's just another bump in the road that adds to your resilience and makes you push harder to work. Now, police say they were able to return a number of the stolen items back to the tattoo parlor and that they believe insurance will cover the rest. A well-traveled highway near Mount Rainier National Park will stay closed indefinitely due to a landslide. The National Park spokesperson says that the park would not reopen until the highway does, and it's two landslides now that have covered portions of State Route 706. This morning, the, the slide remains too dangerous to try and move, and the Washington State Department of Transportation says they don't have a specific timetable for when the highway will reopen. Park officials say that they will provide an escorted convoy this morning for people dealing with the landslide. 2020 presidential candidate Mike Bloomberg officially opened his office in downtown Spokane over the weekend. Bloomberg's campaign officials say that they are making sure voters in every corner of Washington state hear why he is, quote, the best candidate to beat Donald Trump in November. Bloomberg also has an office in Seattle, and his campaign, campaign team has reportedly spent more than $300 million so far in advertising across the country. Millions of dollars in school levies are up for a vote tomorrow in two separate districts. That includes two in the East Valley School District. The larger of the two levies there, the Education and Operations Levy, would renew for four years and cover everything from extracurricular activities to updates in technology. The Capital Levy would renew for two years, covering infrastructure needs like construction plans for four new parking lots at elementary schools. Of course, we've got the detailed descriptions of all the levies up for a vote right now on creme.com. And that is your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem. Thank you so much, Joshua. History was made at the 92nd Academy Awards. Parasite become the first non-English language film to take home the Oscar for Best Picture. The film also won three different awards. The film's director, Bong Joon-ho, was shocked and humbled by all the film's awards. It's also important to note that it's the first time a Korean film won any Oscars. The Oscars broke four Guinness World Records, and I'll be breaking down all of last night's first in today's What's Trending. After winning Best International Feature, I thought I was done for the day and was ready to relax. We also thank fellow directors Martin Scorsese and Quentin Tarantino for their inspiration during his speech. In other big awards of the night, Joaquin Phoenix nabbed his first ever Oscar winning Best Actor for Joker, and Renee Zellweger won Best Actress for Judy. Brad Pitt, well, he won first acting Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Laura Dern also won her first Oscar for Best Supporting Actress in Marriage Story. Other memorable moments of the night include Eminem's opening performance. He surprised the crowd with the performance of Lose Yourself. And then Kristen Wiig and Maya Rodolph gave a whole comedy show in a, in a few minutes. The two actresses from Bridesmaids presented the award for Best Production Design and Best Costume Design. And instead of jumping right to the awards, they opted for a little musical performance about different clothes. They said, the, they had the whole audience completely cracking up. It was a great moment. Some Twitter users even petitioning for the pair to host the awards next year. Former NFL player and director Matthew Cherry took home the Academy Award for Best Animated Short for his film, Hair Love. Cherry is only the second athlete to win an Oscar, the first um, being recently deceased Kobe Bryant, whom Cherry dedicated his award. In 2016, Cherry actually tweeted about having an image to go with an Oscar-worthy short film, and then yesterday retweeted that image with a caption, 
nailed it. Oh, that feels so good, right? To be able to have that dream come true and see that. Now, although he did not win Sunday, composer John Williams broke two records. He now has a record, 52 Oscar nominations for someone still living with his original score for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. And this is the first person to be nominated for um, Oscars in seven different decades. Walt Disney has the most overall Oscar nominations with 59. So after this exciting historic night, we want to know what you think, which movie should have won Best Picture? Let us know what you think by voting in our Crumb 2 mobile app. We can chat about it all morning long. I know this is one of the biggest awards of the year, really. Mm -hmm. um, what do you guys think? I haven't seen Parasite, but everyone who's seen it that I've talked to said it's amazing. So I think, I mean, well-deserved that they won. And yeah. pretty cool, it's a foreign language film, you know. That for the first time winning yes. Best Picture, so I think that's pretty neat. And a lot of people were saying that they were the underdog originally. Mm -hmm. They thought, you know, in a perfect world, maybe Parasite might win, but because of the lack of diversity that those nominations have seen, they thought maybe this wasn't the year that they would win, but uh, they were kind of the underdog in this and ended up running victorious, so mm -hmm. good for them. Who doesn't like rooting for the underdog? I know, you know? exactly, right? <laughs> Always works out. So, yeah, good for them. All those musical performances I thought were great. Idina Menzel did a performance with all the international uh, yes. Elsas. Oh, that was so cool. It was great. And then I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away from Toy Story 4 was beautiful. <laughs> so was I think for me, the music performances were the standout. Yeah, and uh, the crowd reaction for when Eminem was performing oh, yeah. was pretty was funny. Sick. Some mm -hmm. people were like, I don't know who this is. <laughs> the younger generation, you know, they're all <laughs> singing along. It was just a complete split in the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> I felt bad. It looked like Billie Eilish had no idea what was going on. She didn't, I don't think she picked up on the Kristen Wiig, Maya Rudolph humor, uh, and a couple other things. And they kept doing these cutaway shots, and I thought, poor girl, she <laughs> is 18 years old. She's like, I want to go home. I know, seriously. <laughs> but she did a great job with her, uh, the, she did the In Memoriam mm -hmm. performance, so she did a great job with that, too. Yeah. All right, so we're all, of course, I uh, want you to weigh in this morning. Let us know what your favorite parts were. Uh, what does that say? 100% think 1917? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I Good heard problem. that one's great, too. So. <laughs> it seemed to be the consensus favorite going in. Yeah, so it, it was. Sense. Definitely was. So, yeah, keep voting all morning long. All right, it is 5-12 now. Valentine's Day, just a few days away. And then there's your reminder. There Do go. not forget. <laughs> but as the saying goes, money cannot buy love. And after the break, we'll connect the dots on how much people are actually spending for the ones they love. And are you ready to eat for eight hours and then fast for 16? This diet, of course, some of us know about it. It's called the intermittent fasting diet. In the next half hour, our Verify team looks into it and whether it is actually promising. 